점수 잡는 hackers. Hi, welcome back to Hackers SAT Essay Prep. In the previous lecture, we went over how to read and analyze the passage. And in this lecture, we're going to go over how to plan and write your essay. So let's actually look at today's goals before we get started. First of all, we're going to go over the essay template, so how you can organize your essay. And then after we look at the template, we're going to see how you can use the template as an outline. After that, we're going to go over the levels of paraphrasing that you should use in your template. And at the way end, I'll give you a few writing tips. Let's go right into it. If we look at the standard essay structure, obviously you need an introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion. If you look at the introduction, the introduction should be fairly short. It shouldn't be longer than your body paragraph. And in particular, you need to focus on your thesis statement that includes the main argument. And we're going to see how you can write your thesis statement a little bit later. Afterwards, it would be nice if you could have three body paragraphs. If you could have more than three, that would be even better. But an ideal essay will have three body paragraphs. And at the end, obviously, you should have a conclusion. And the conclusion should just restate or summarize everything else that you wrote in the essay. Let's actually go a little bit more into detail about how you can write your introduction. As I said before, you need to have a thesis statement. Now, this is probably the most important part of an essay. You need to explain the main point, the main point given by the author, and you need to also state the rhetorical devices that are used by the author in the passage. So in particular, in the introduction, you should have the title of the passage, obviously in capital letters, and in quotation marks. A lot of people, they tend to underline the passage name, but you should have quotation marks. Second, you need to have the author's full name. A lot of students, they use the first name or only the last name, but you need to have the full name once, and then afterwards, you can use the last name. Next, you need to have the author's main argument. They're going to give you this argument in the box at the end, which is the prompt. So it's provided in the prompt. You could copy that or you can paraphrase it. And at the end, you need to state the argument building techniques that the author uses. In particular, if you could have three that would be best, evidence, reasoning, and stylistic elements, but not all passages have all three of these techniques. They might only have one, they might only have two. In that case, you would just talk about one or two. Let's actually look at a sample then. So these are just typical two sentences that you should have. The first sentence, in the article, in the speech. How do you know if it's an article or speech? An article will have the name of the magazine or the name of the newspaper. And a speech, they don't really have names often. In more cases, if it's a speech, they're going to have the location. So you need to first differentiate if it's an article or speech. And you would have the article title in quotation marks, as I said before. And make sure you have your comma here. And the whole name of the author. So you're going to have the full name, the first name, and the last name argues that, you could definitely change this verb if you want to. Instead of argues, you could write asserts that. And then you have the main point. This main point is given in the prompt at the end, and you should copy that or you can paraphrase it. The second sentence, in the article or in the speech, comma, the last name of the author. Now, since you stated the full name or the whole name first, then you can write the last name. But you need to have the full name first, and then you could use the last name. Convincingly makes his or her case. How do you know if it's a male or female? It's going to tell you in the prompt. So if it's a male, write his. And if it's a female, then you should write her case through the use of evidence and or reasoning and or stylistic elements. If they have all three, write all three. If they don't have all three, if they only have two, then just choose the two that appear in the passage. So these are going to be your typical two sentences that you should have in your introduction. Let's look at the body paragraph. As I said before, it would be ideal to have three body paragraphs. Now, why would you have three body paragraphs? Because there's going to be three argument building techniques, and according to those techniques, you should have three body paragraphs. But as I said before, if there are only two, then you could write two body paragraphs, or you can write three body paragraphs and have one body paragraph be a repetition of one of the techniques. So make sure that you have two or three body paragraphs and evidence reasoning stylistic elements. It would be ideal to have all three, but if not, just have two of the three. As I said, no, not all passages have all three techniques. 
Okay, then let's actually look at what a body paragraph should include. Number one, obviously you need to have your topic sentence. As I said, the thesis statement is really important in the introduction, and the topic sentence is really important in the body paragraph. Now, in this topic sentence, you should, what should you mention? You should mention the techniques. So if it's evidence, mention evidence. If it's reasoning, mention reasoning. And if it's a stylistic element, then you should mention the stylistic element. Second, you need to have examples, and these examples are examples found in the passage. You can use a direct quotation. As I said in the previous lecture, direct quotations are, you're going to copy it directly so you have quotation marks. Or you can have indirect quotations, which are paraphrases of what was stated in the passage. After the example, you need to have your explanation. Now, what should you explain? You can explain the main point that's given by the author, and you should also explain the persuasive effect the author's argument building techniques have on the reader. Now, it's not or. You need to have the main point and you need to have the persuasive effect. And at the end, it would be nice to have a summary sentence that sums up the content of the paragraph. Obviously, this last sentence, the summary sentence, it's optional. It would be good to have it, but if you don't, it's no big deal. Then let's actually go over what a body paragraph sample would look like. As I said before, the topic sentence is very important. You need to have a strong first sentence that's gonna summarize everything that you're gonna write in the body paragraph. So how would you start it? If it's your first body paragraph, definitely let the reader know that it's the first paragraph. So first, from the beginning, from the start, right away. You, you should use these um, transitional phrases, and then you would use the last name of the author. Since you already stated the full name, the whole name in the introduction, you could just have the last name of the author. Tries to appeal to his or her audience through the use of stylistic elements. Or if it's evidence, through the use of evidence. If it's reasoning, through the use of reasoning. So in your topic sentence, you should state, what kind of argument building technique the author uses. And what about your second and third body paragraph then? Make sure you have an effective transition. So as I said before, you need to tell the reader that this is your second body paragraph. So what, could, what kind of transitional phrases can you use? The author's last name in the possessive form. Argument is further supported by his or her use of reasoning. Further supported. Obviously, this word further means that you already stated something before and it's another point. And since we use stylistic elements in body one, maybe in body two, you can talk about reasoning. Okay. Then what about your third body paragraph? You should let the reader know that this is your last body paragraph. So you can use words like finally or lastly. If you're going to have four body paragraphs, then you could even write in addition, also furthermore, and tell them that you have another point. The author's last name utilizes evidence. Since we talked about stylistic element in body number one, in body number two, you would talk about reasoning, and in body number three, you can talk about evidence to convince his or her readers that his or her claims are valid. Now keep in mind, you're always gonna say that the author's point is valid. The author's points are credible, are sound. So you're always going to agree with the author and state that his points are correct. So you would use a lot of these similar adjectives.